All right, so where I left off, I was setting up my first frame and I created a stage file. So now I want to open that stage file next to my assets file in Photopea. So I'm going to say file open. So we're going to have two files open within the same browser window of Photopea. I go to my class folder, go to assignment three, and I open up that stage, which I mark with a blue and a green. And they look identical, except for their layers, right? They're side by side. And that's going to be really helpful because this is going to be my film role. So this is how my film starts. But now I use my assets file to build my next one. So how do I show this dog now panting? Well, I first I'm going to delete. First, I'm going to deselect, right? And then I'm going to delete this merged layer. Then I'm going to duplicate what I had before of Bandit. And now, what's something I can do to help with the panting? Well, I want to maybe puppet warp it. Let's see if that works. I know it cut some stuff off before, but if I go to edit puppet warp, and then if I lock the ears, like maybe up here, and lock the cheeks maybe down here, this might make it really simple. And if I just tug the top of the head, oh, look at that. I get a little bit of movement. Let's see if it actually works when I hit. That's the way it's supposed to work. And this is lower resolution than when I was using it on my proving ground. So let's just first have him look up a little bit. Okay, and I hit return. Be so nice if it worked. There we go. So these are not vectors anymore. I rasterized it all together. So this is how Puppet Warp is supposed to work. Just makes these subtle shifts. And yes, it gave me a little peek on the head, but I can fix that. I'm just going to use my a really flat ellipse selection and just delete that out. So this is a little happy dog, right? Now, now that I know that works, maybe I can be a little bit more deliberate with it. So let me try it again. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to go to Edit Puppet Warp. Because this is lower resolution, it works a little bit better than it did when I was doing it on my full-size proving ground. And I'm just going to lift it a little bit, maybe from each cheek. So maybe from here, lift it a little bit, and from here, lift it a little bit. And then hit return. And what I love about Puppet Warp is it just shifts everything fairly believably. All right. So I've got that. That could be my next frame, right? So what do I do? I turn off the one behind it. And then I keep that white background and then I need to merge them. So I hold down option. I select them all. And I say layer merge layers. It makes a copy of it. This is just being extra safe. So I don't have to go back in history or anything. I'm just merging them while not destroying the layers they come from. Then I'm going to say Command A to select all, Command C to copy it all, move to my stage file, Command V to paste it. And now I have my first two frames. And honestly, I can cheat a little bit because all he's doing is panting, going up and down. And I can really just play these two frames for a while. for my animation, right? So how do I do that? I just make a duplicate of layer one and I move it on top of layer two. Make a duplicate of layer two with Command J. Oh, got behind me there. And then move that on top of layer one. And how many times should I repeat that? 
Six times total? Okay. Yeah, so now this time I'll select both of them by holding down Command, clicking both those layers, and then doing Command J on both of them. And then that will copy them both. So to test my animation, I don't even need to, to run it into a different program. I can just turn on and off the eyeball, right? Now, you might ask, because I would, why, if you just have a white background, and you have a white background here, do you need to spend that extra time merging together your white background with your, your free-floating dog head, <laughs> right? And here's the reason. If I just copy the free-floating dog head layer like this, so Command-A, Command, me on the right layer, Command-A, Command-C, and then paste it, it's not going to line up necessarily within that square because they're free-floating pixels. By having those background pixels filled in, it will always line up. And it's annoying, but it's just how frame-by-frame -frame workflow works. So that's the last frame I ended on right here. Now he's going to keep doing this, but he needs to start turning red and starting to look a little worried. So now, my next one, I'm going to duplicate it. And I should be where I, yep, that was after my puppet warp. So I'm going to duplicate it, turn on the white background. And now I'm going to mark it, because this is when there starts to be the first kind of change of state. So I'm going to mark it red. To change my creature a little bit red, what do I need to do? I can just go to Image, Adjustment, and maybe Color Balance. I could do it with Hue Saturation, but maybe I want to do it with just the midtones. I just want to push them just a little towards red. Just so slightly flushed that you can barely tell the difference. Because he's going to keep panting. And then maybe I want to puppet warp it again. So edit, puppet warp. But this time I'm going to make it a little bit more lopsided. Because it's already repeated the same thing a few times. So now I'm going to move the ears down a little bit. And the cheeks down a little bit. Not a huge difference, right? Just like that. And then maybe I want to stretch it all a little bit. So I can do Control T. Remember, you can always use regular warp as well. And this will actually change the expression in his eyes a little by stretching that. So now he's like this. And let me bring that one over. I hold down, select everything, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Layers, Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it, go to the stage and Command V to paste it on. And now this one I'm going to mark red as well, just so I remember. This is what's called a motion cycle. You know, it just keeps repeating the same things. And now I can remember when it starts to change. But that isn't dramatic enough for my final frame here, so I need to make him a little bit redder and looking a little less comfortable. So what do I do? I deselect Command-D. I delete the merged one. I get back to where it starts to change. I duplicate it. And now I'm going to go redder still. So at, uh, image, color balance, midtones, more red. Quite a bit more this time. Okay, now I might change the expression by control T, warp it, and stretch the eyes a little bit pinched, stretching up and down. Because that's a slightly different expression there. Okay, 
And then I can also puppet warp it to keep that kind of up and down panting motion going. And then mark it at the sides of the cheeks, which is where I'm moving it. Anchor it at the bottom because I don't want this head looking like it's moving up and down, just like the cheeks on up, right? And then I'm going to do it a little lopsided like I did before. Move the ears down a little, down a little, cheeks down a little. So he's kind of more compressed than he's been before. Hit return. Puppet warp takes a little bit of time. You see, that's a big change. And maybe it's a little too much, so I'm going to do control T. And then I'm just going to use warp to bring it back to something. So this is all very subtle because now we're getting used to little movements. We're expecting little movements. So that's still too big. I need to warp those. Ah, control T. Warp those ears back down. They're too strong. That's why it's always good. If you ever see animators work, like traditional animators, they're always flipping the last frame they drew with the new frame they're drawing. And we can do that by clicking on and off our eyeball for our layers. And it's a little lopsided. That's what I want. So, yeah, that kind of works. I'm going to shrink that ear a little bit more. Kind of line it up. So I'm starting to get that kind of worried, lopsided expression. And I'm finding my way as I do this. So maybe a little too lopsided. <laughs> okay, I like that. So now what do I do? I select them all, hold down shift, go to the bottom, hold down option, layer, merge the layers, command A, command C, move it over to the stage. And I can run the animation backwards, see what it's doing. So this is how it starts, then we get going. And if I like that, I hit Command S, and it will save it right to my stage, which is right here. So I make it capitals. And sometimes I'll make a separate folder for my assets, because I might need them later. So I'm going to bring these into it, even though I've already put them into the Photoshop file, and I'm going to bring all these little fire elements into it. And I can bring my GIF animatic into it as well. And then these were extras that I don't need. All right, let me save my assets as well, Command S. And that updates right here. So these are the ones that matter. I might even organize them so that they're bigger and at the top of my folder layers. Assets and Stage. I deselect Command-D. I delete the merged one, which will now always be on top of the red. So that coloring kind of helps me. And I'm going to, if, if you started to get really hot, right, you would probably stop your normal breathing and panting. So I need to worry a little less about that up and down movement. And now just really concentrate on the eyes the expression, the subtlety, and the turning red. So now we're going to really turn red. Color balance, mid-tones, red, and in the highlights I can push it a little bit towards red. Now is that too much? 